255. You never bought a cheeseburger for 255 in your life? When when could you buy a burger for 255? I I like a good burger in Philly growing up. You can get one. Cheese, lettuce, tomato, onion, nice Kaiser roll. I don't even think like I guess like McDonald's probably had like 99 no, cents burger. burgers, but that like, doesn't count. I'm talking like a bar burger. No, for 255, I don't think so. We had the hot dog index at, at Bubba Dogs. When I started working there when I was 13, so that was 2004. A hot dog was like 150. By the time I hung up the tongs, 2012, it was at like 275. Almost, almost 100% inflation in the hot dog index over the course of that eight years. Yeah, I don't think I ever had the... I mean, besides like making my own burgers, I don't think I ever had the f- fortune to. We had some really good get burgers. Get a two dollars and fifty five cent burger. We had some good burgers on Memorial Day here in Texas. I gotta say, Memorial Day is not uh, as celebrated down here in Texas as it is in the Northeast. It's just like another long weekend. By the way. Um, the reason the burgers comment came up is because right before we went on air, I said to Marty, oh, this is episode 255. And he's like, remember when we could buy burgers for 255? And I, was, I just called bullshit on him. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went live. Um, really? Memorial Day isn't that celebrated? No, I mean, up in the Northeast, tri-state area, it's a big deal. It's like a clear demarcation between spring and summer. Summer officially starts or unofficially starts on Memorial Day weekend at the shore. Maybe it's just because of the lack of beaches. Could definitely contribute to it. It's also already like really your hot Memorial here. Day, your Memorial Day memories are like all beach related. Yes. Yeah, that's what it is. No, but it's like a big party. Everybody is just going about their day here. Did have a barbecue. Had a Bitcoiner over. Had a good time. Yeah, I had people over. I like Memorial Day. We had picanha, burgers, hot dogs, some corn. It's good. It's a good day. Stayed up late around the dinner table too. We did honor the troops too. Carlos, don't worry. Thank you to our troops out there. Yeah, much respect. Um two fifty five. There is no debt ceiling. The debt ceiling does not exist. The debt ceiling does not exist. Should we start there? Because there is, or we should start with Clark's dashboard. Let's get that out of the way. I have such a little sleep that uh, I said, Marty said we should name the episode The Debt Ceiling Does Not Exist. And I said, well, maybe we should name the episode World Coin is a Scam, which it is. And then I suggested separately The Debt Ceiling Does Not Exist and thought it was my own original idea. <laughs> I had, to, and then, I had to say, hey, man, I just that said that. <laughs> <laughs> I am, uh, I'm in the same boat as you. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I had a kid in my bed from 11 p.m. till 7 a.m. two nights ago. And then last night, the youngest woke up at 3 a.m. Didn't go back to bed till like 4.30. And that was not fun. Uh, well, we can sleep after hyper-Bitcoinization. Oh, my adrenaline's going to be pumping this type of recordization. I don't think I'll ever sleep again. We'll, we'll sleep when we're dead. Just kidding. Get your sleep. Get your eight hours, freaks, while you can. Over to Clark's dashboard. Price of Bitcoin is currently 27000 15 cuck bucks. One cuck bucks is going to get you 3,702 sats. Current market capitalization is 523.8 billion cuck bucks. We are at block height 792,406. We had a difficulty adjustment. Uh, gosh, it had to be after midnight last night. And it was a upwards adjustment of 3.4%. Blocks are coming in at 9 minutes and 43 seconds. On average, thank you to all the miners plugging in ASICs to help clear the mempool. 
really love that. Obviously, we're only 118 blocks into this difficulty epoch. So we are 180, excuse me, 1,898 blocks away from the next adjustment. And this isn't really reliable data, but as of right now, it's looking like it's going to be a negative 14.9% adjustment. Blocks been coming in at 11 minutes and 42 seconds on average since how many the difficulty adjusted earlier today how many yeah it's not it don't take any credence into it's too early to call any of that um what is uh how many transactions are in clark's mempool 74,716 you should you have to read that going forward in the beginning of every i do recap. i do read it everyone maybe you just don't listen. Uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> well add it to the list it's been on the list for five years. Okay, well, um, <laughs> Marty, mempools are never going to clear again, and it seems like people are starting to come around to that fact begrudgingly. I haven't gotten any apologies, though. No one's no one's apologized. You'll never get an apology, okay. Uh, let's compare. I sent, a, I sent a poll out today that hasn't really gotten that many votes, but... We've gotten 700 votes on the polls. When will mempools clear again? 31% said never. Um, 34% said before December 31st. 6% said after December 31st. And 29% of people should delete their Twitter accounts because they have no opinion on the matter. <laughs> like, what type of person sees that poll and is like, ah, you know, I just want to see the answers. I have no opinion. People are curious. people, maybe they don't have a well educated opinion to give and they just want to see the results, you know, and it's being intellectually honest. It's maybe not 29, like, it, maybe it's 29 not like there's a lot at stake. Twenty nine percent of respondents are intellectually honest. They don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking opinion. Uh comparing the immediate next block fee rate. From Clark's dashboard to mempool.space on Clark's dashboard, 62 sats per V-byte will get you in the next block. But if you go to memspace, memspace, mempool.space, you could save a bit. They're saying high priority transactions will get in at 55 sats per V-byte. So take that with a grain of salt. Or not with a grain of salt, just take that as it is. Uh, unspent capacity, wow. We were below 7,000 last week and we skyrocketed up this week. It is 7,006. 168.47 Bitcoin and Samurai Whirlpool unspent capacity. That's an unspent value over 200 million, 207.1 million cuck bucks. Did we cover this? I think we covered this months ago that Clark gets, has a different number than. It was under reporting. Yes, we covered it. Then Samurai's Whirlpool stats have. Yes. Um, I don't think he ever fixed it because I saw on Twitter that Samurai was saying that it's over 8,000 new all time high. It's over 8,000. But I don't know. Either way, number go up. Great to see. Hell yeah. You know what, Matt? I know you may not like it, but you'll see it in the live chat. When does the info uh, wash? Why did you start? get it for? Oh, because you watch on YouTube and I get like it piped in through Ecamm, so I'm delayed. Yes. It popped up after you said it. I like uh, Rob Hamilton with empty mempools, handshake, the debt ceiling. Uh, neither exist. <laughs> um, the what was I going to say? I I don't know if we uh, talked about it last week, but Keeper Wallet added Whirlpool support. That might have been in between last two episodes, um, but it's the first Whirlpool client on iOS. Um, I doubt it was you know the majority of the increase, but um, Whirlpool is now available on every platform. The Keeper Wallet uh, integration is definitely very beta. Um, but beta in the sense of it's like a, a testing environment. It's not really like beta, like a beta mail. It's just beta. Correct. It's like very software. beta. Like it's software. A... <laughs> like software, Marty. Um, uh, the freaks can just assume when I use beta, I'm usually talking about software. It, it might even be considered alpha. It does not have Tor support yet, so keep that in mind. Um but it does mark a major milestone for Whirlpool, which is that it's now available on every platform, Linux, Mac, 
Windows, Android, iPhone. And um, very few people understand this with Whirlpool. Like the whole dream of Whirlpool is that many different uh, app developers integrate it. So like if you have issues with a specific app or it's not on your platform or something like that, you'll have many different options for how you want to use Whirlpool and they'll all share the liquidity pool and they'll all share the fees. Um, so like Keeper Wallet adds Whirlpool, they're getting a portion of Whirlpool fees generated out of Keeper Wallet. Um, Sparrow Wallet is obviously uh, was the big one. They get a portion. Um, and it also breaks up this trust concern that a lot of people have um, for light client users on Samurai because even... It, I believe on Keeper Wallet, you can use your own node. Um, but even if you weren't using your own node, you're using Keeper's node, right? And on Sparrow Wallet, you can use your own node. But even if you're not using your own node, you use his whitelisted Electrum servers, right? So it's it's all different nodes that are all contributing to the same liquidity pool. And so as more apps add support, um, it, should, it should improve that trust model even greater. Um, like, I think it'd be pretty cool to see, like, uh, in, like, some of the more mainstream wallets that are horrible uh, to add Whirlpool support just so that users have that functionality available to them. Be and there's a massive user base. Shout out to the Keeper team. Getting it in there. It's been a long time coming. Excuse me for the burp. Um, it's good to see. You want diversification of the coordinators. Nope, coordinate is the same. Diversity. You have diverse of the of 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 the clients. Of the clients. It's of the clients and of 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 the nodes. If people are not using their own node, which nodes they're using diversification there. Thank you for the correction. There is no debt ceiling freaks. It doesn't exist. Never has been. Never, Never has was. Been. We have the debt ceiling impasse here in the United States, which has become somewhat of a biannual occurrence, less than biannual. Well, is that twice a year? Is that what biannual means? No, it's every two years, right? <laughs> semi-annual. Is, semi-annual. Is bi- no, I think biannual means both. It's like bi-weekly. It's fucking stupid. Sorry. Continue. Every two years about... I mean, just imagine like if a degenerate gambler... Oh, that just God. like borrowed a ton of money, just kept well, saying like, I'm not going to borrow more than $10. And then Kurt, this was like, I'm not going to borrow more than $15. Like that's what it fucking is. According to uh, Marion Webster, biannual, one, occurring twice a year, two, occurring every two years. So it's both. Yeah, it's like biweekly, bro. Yeah. Stupid. Dumb. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think 18 months ago was the last time we had a debt ceiling impasse. I read about it a couple of weeks ago. It's just a bunch of posturing. The left says, hey, raise it immediately. We need to pay for all this stuff. People are going to die. People are going to go poor. Raise it now. The Republicans go, no, we need to cut spending. We're going to hold the line. Then it gets to the last minute. The Republicans bend the knee. Nothing really gets resolved. I don't know. That's not the case every year, every time. It just depends who's in... Who's Power. ever not in the who's never not in the White House is usually the one who's saying yeah, we, like we need we, wanna, we need to get our house in order. Yeah, we went over this a few weeks ago, I believe, the last time the government shut down because we reached a debt limit and there was no resolution at the time it was under Obama. I believe it was like twenty sixteen. The government shut down for I think about a month, um, a few weeks at least. Uh, but then, even so, pushed. No real cu- spending cuts. There are Republicans saying, like Rep. Tom Massey, who seems to have been like a swing vote on whether or not this will get pushed through. To be clear, it hasn't been pushed through yet. There's still some formalities that, that need to get it over the line, but it's looking like it will get passed. Um, it seems like there may be minimal spending cuts or at least a curb. But Doubt it. Doubt it. And there's also like a suspension of the ceiling until 2025 and oh till 2025 how long term of them that's great well it was it's again another example of political games they use 2025 right after the election right after the election 
and that's actually if you go and watch the video that Peter St. Ange posted this morning, that effectively pushes the conversation to 2026 because in 2025, post-2024 election, that'll be a lame duck period uh, and nobody will be doing anything. Then after that, you have all the committees that need to be formed. That takes time then, so it really won't be. Does uh, not matter because it does not exist. Does not exist. Um, but is a Bitcoin podcast. There is something with this debt ceiling deal that does pertain to Bitcoin, and that is the Dame excise tax that Biden was threatening, which would have been a 30% excise tax on electricity for Bitcoin miners or singled out. Uh, and it seems like that is getting scraped from the deal. So that will not that be That was part. never going to happen anyway. Never going to happen. Officially not going to happen now. Uh so but that's like classic, right? Like that's, I think we've talked about this in the past. Like there's going to be more of those. It's like uh, in the election years, you have all the virtue signaling proposals that they know will never get passed, but they know it riles up their base. So this is one of those, in my opinion. Yes. So the digital asset mining energy excise tax has been nixed from the bill. And here in the Forbes article, I'm reading it now, the bill called for a 10% tax on the electricity used by Bitcoin miners beginning in 2024 with that figure jumping to 30% by 2026. Um, so that's not happening. I mean, but, that would have been a de facto ban on on Bitcoin mining in America. Yeah, it would have priced everything. Because margins out. are so tight. I mean, it, it would just would have been black market miners only. Yeah. So Biden's trying to help me win this bet, making sure that miners are still plugged in. Logan, Carlos in the chat gave you a shout out on using Firefox reader mode. Very clean. You're going to say something? You had the mic up to your face. Say it. He said no. <laughs> what were you going to say? We know his mic works. Thanks, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> All that for that. <laughs> uh Yes, I mean, that's the other thing. I'm bringing it back to the debt ceiling. It doesn't exist. We're currently $30 trillion in debt. Estimates by the CBO. What does that stand for? Something Budget Office. Congressional Budget Con Office. Congressional Budget I'm, Office. I'm guessing. It sounds right. Yeah. Uh, so the projections by the CBO are that it will hit $34 trillion by the end of next year. So that would be more than 10%, uh, a 12%, 12.5%, I believe, increase in national debt in a year and a half. Why are you showing us an Igloo I don't know, cooler? I just, it's a Pelican cooler. I think it's a pretty dope cooler. <laughs> Matt's got cool coolers. He's pulling out beers. Um, yeah, it's just that. And it's, if you look at, let's pull up the... Uh, the national debt chart. Because um, if you look at it, it's going parabolic right now in the wrong direction. And when you compare it to the... Depends on your perspective. The revenues that we have coming in and... The I'm just situation. disappointed. I just want a huge shout out to Joe Weisenthal because I know he's disappointed as well. We were hoping this was our moment and the coin was going to get minted. But it's going to have to be pushed off for another two years. At least, potentially three. They could technically mint the coin in the meantime and just stack sats with it. I, I still think that's a compelling compelling strategy. Mint multiple coins. Yeah, why just one? Why stop at one? I can't. Well, here's the chart. Yeah. No. Wait, no, that's not as dramatic as it should be. There's one with like a red line under it. I can't. There's one it. that's just like straight hockey stick, right? right? I have one of those here. It's just. I like the straight hockey stick one. It's provocative. It's a shorter time scale. So if you just go from like 1980 to today. Um, that's the one you're looking for. There you go. Look at that hockey stick. <laughs> so this is from, I think, 1971 to today. Runaway debt here in the United States and you know, you're fucked when uh, it's, it's, it's based in millions of dollars and the, 
and then there's also millions in the <laughs> in the <laughs> y axis <laughs> 30, approaching 32 trillion, so we're above 30, we're at like 31. 32 million million. It's a lot, a lot of millions. It's, it's more, it's, wow, that's a lot. Parker wants you to know that he's going to get me a massive Yeti for the studio. Oh, well, pa- I mean, Yetis, Yetis are fiat, Pelicans are, are more Bitcoin. Parker, you're obviously listening to this. If you want to come yeah, and comment does, on cool, has this been three weeks? Has this been three weeks in a row that he's commented via Marty? <laughs> well, Parker, thank in. you for being a guest host again on the on the show. We appreciate you. Yeah, if you want to come and talk debt ceiling, we've got the mic open to the to the right. It would here. be it would be a great bear market uh, way to pass the time of. Of just we just increasingly try and one up each other on cooler size throughout the throughout the summer. <laughs> I just end up recording from a cooler <laughs> at some keep, point. <laughs> we just keep pulling coolers on it. Uh, yeah. I mean that's it's it's not good. So there's a couple things here. We have the debt, and so that debt comes with interest payments. A lot of this debt right now, uh, as you can see with the hockey stick growth on the chart, has occurred. Um, between 2008 and 2021, uh, which is when interest rates, the Fed funds rate was artificially low near the zero bound. The treasury issued a lot of uh, treasuries during that period. And a lot of them were shorter dated treasuries. So think uh, your one year, two year, five year, 10 year. Uh, And I believe more than 50% of them are due to roll over in the next year, year and a half. And once they roll over, if interest rates are still high, uh, the Fed is holding rates higher. That means they have to roll over at higher rates, which means they're going to have to pay even more interest on this debt that we're seeing here, which will mean that the debt will rise even faster. And so that's the position we find ourselves in here in the United States. It's not a good one. As a father of two young children, It is a bit unnerving and disgusting that we have this inability to actually confront this massive problem that is staring us right in the face, literally on the screen right now, if you're watching this. Uh, Again, I I wrote about it in the Ben. I believe we talked about it last week, that we need to adopt Thomas Paine's approach to this, which is if there's going to be pain in my day, there's going to be pain let it be in my day and not the day of my children we need to come to grips with this and try to solve it one way or another i think we just need to <laughs> stop spending overtly default on some of the debt take the pain it'll be painful but it doesn't it matter Marty. parker's just, coming just in. just stay home and stack sets like it, it used to be infuriating to me and then i discovered bitcoin like we have the ability to opt out whatever Like, that's not my money. I'm not, you know, I don't have to use dollars anymore. I don't have to save my family's wealth in dollars. Yeah, but you have to pay taxes to try to pay that back, and they're only going to get higher. So that is your money. Yeah, I mean, regardless <laughs> of the debt ceilings, ta- taxes are a fucking scam. Like, who'd you have on air? Like, he, I thought it was a very compelling argument where he's, he said, like, two days of every week you're just working Three days. the government. Or two days. Peter that's Saint ridiculous. Here, no, you come over here and yeah. get on camera. But that's I'll regardless of the here. debt ceiling. Well, before Parker gets on, I just wanted to say, you know, on. Parker deserves applause for not being a blue check. Um, Brent Droid in the comments said I shouldn't call uh, Marty a weft cuck anymore because it's not nice. I would say that Marty called himself a weft cuck last week. Um, well, uh, th- those weren't my words. <laughs> I just hopped into some real spicy stuff. What did you, I, oh, we're, I was just talking about how Marty got a blue check, so now he's going to eat the bugs and live in a pod and get the chip as well. That's not true. I saw that Uncle Rock started that too. I have not. Yep, he's, Even though he I'm, also not master, I'm not a I'm not going blue check. I know. See, we, we're aligned. Yeah. I was giving you I was giving you right before you uh got on got on the hot seat, I uh was giving you praise for, for not bending the knee to the blue check. A lot of these blue checks are gonna do the C B D Cs as well. I actually brought the orb into the to the comments today. We're gonna start scanning irises. I, I switched. We're going full AI podcast. Give me your irises. I love how I told Marty. Marty said retinas last week. I was like, they actually scan irises, and he's gotten it correct ever since. 
Bit, Parker, this is an Apple computer. Do you know how to operate this? I don't, but I'm going to try. Okay. One, what up, Parker? How's it uh, going? Your your cooler flex triggered me. That um, that's what led to this ultimately. I did really appreciate the Pelican uh, case that we got at uh, the mining event. The mining event that was a special touch. Yeah, I like the Pelican swag. Good good American company, made in America still. Apparently, uh, Yeti's making uh, cast iron uh, pots now. Or cast Getting iron? Oh, the, I, uh... I thought you were going to say cast iron coolers. I was like, I love cast iron, but that seems very impractical. <laughs> um, I just got to rep my Austin companies. Um, okay. So you guys had up the, uh, the the total debt chart. Yes. Okay. So yes. I want to pull up the, the Treasury General account. Okay. This is right. the same chart. Okay, Marty's going to instruct me how to. Uh, <laughs> where, where do you want to search? Twitter. Where Where is that window? That's not the video. Yeah, uh, uh, you got to. So you, we look it up online, then we okay. dump it in Slack. And All right, hold on. It on the screen. <laughs> Treasury General <laughs> Account, Fred. Okay. So. Do you I'm guys really it. have a World Coin Orb in the Commons? Um, <laughs> I think Marty's trolling you. So we, not fr- yet. We frisk for. Uh, or orbs. No orbs in this house. Okay, how do we get By that? By the way, while you're looking for that, freaks, uh, there was a story that came out in Coindesk. They must be listening to Rabbit Hole Recap about the world coin credentials, uh, people selling their iris scans um, for their local, local fiat or Bitcoin um, since the last Rabbit Hole Recap where we discussed it. And I was... Marty asked me, like, what about AI faked uh, eyeballs? And so, like, and I didn't have a good answer because I said I didn't want to look into it. And then I looked into it. So thanks for that, Marty. Um, they they scan their real eyeball because there's some kind of check that they're actually human, probably thermal or something like that. And then they sell their credentials after they do the scan. So it's not like they're selling pictures of their eyeballs. They're selling post-scanned world coin credentials okay parker so continue is this technically a Sybil attack on the Sybil resistant protocol uh i mean no i mean they just created this dark incentive for people to scan their fucking eyeballs uh but it's still one eyeball per person it's just some people own multiple credentials now because they bought it from poor people in africa damn hate to see it I'm kidding, freaks. We're not scanning irises here. No uh, orbs in this pretty, house. It's pretty fucked up. <laughs> All right, let's go back to dead ceiling. I got, I got <laughs> 10 minutes. Uh, we okay. got Parker dragged into this. Sorry, Parker. Uh, okay, so the thing I wanted to point out here, and this is something that uh, a few folks have been pointing out, um, which is apt, is that, so this is the amount of cash that the treasury holds. So okay. when they start to get in these debt ceiling battles, um, the treasury starts to deplete rather than increase its total debt. They will start to basically use cash on balance sheet um, and draw down on it. So that number, if you not necessarily zoomed in, but if you, if you saw the actual number on the far right, where it currently is today is about 60 billion. Um, It's been drawn down from, you know, uh, about a trillion um, kind of towards about, 12 months ago um, after they did the the tsunami print money in the pandemic, the, 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 the central government's supply of money increased massively and then it's been drained, but, but kind of like trying to normalize for what is the, is the, is the federal government's necessary working capital. If you kind of go back before the, the, the 2020 period, which the government's always growing. So in theory, the, the, the uh, working capital sh- necessities of the government should grow but kind of going back to that channel b- between 2019 and 2020 they were running at about 400 billion so right now it's about 60 billion um that they've they're that but can't they just print print more money well technically the fed has to print money that's where i'm, right. I'm getting but when the when the the treasury is draining its working capital that money is going back into the banking system Right, so these dollars are not disappearing; they're moving from the treasury's account into the banking system. Okay. Um, when the treasury is about to reissue debt, they're going to get their working capital back up to some higher normal level 
to, to fund their operations, which will probably be somewhere about four hundred billion dollars. So that will. So great. they like issue treasuries, and then the Fed prints money and buys the treasuries. Is that it? Basically? Uh, they issue treasuries. The, the banks generally, them, buy, right? the free market generally buys it. So that moves dollars out of the banking system to the treasury account. And it takes some time for it to come back into the banking system. But the point is that 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 draw of of funds from the free market basically drains reserves out of the banking system. And right now we're at an abnormally low level of cash that's sitting in the treasury. So it's basically going to put a strain on the banks when the, <clears throat> from a cash position, when, uh, when the, the government do you, starts to reissue debt. Couldn't do the you, treasury just mint a coin and then have a trillion dollars in this account? Yeah, theoretically, <laughs> but <laughs> no, but, but the way that it would technically happen and what, what it's going to induce is, um, the banks are already getting squeezed. So this is going to just incrementally squeeze the banks from well, a liquidity right. standpoint. They don't have to be forced buyers, though, right? So is that why Yellen choreographed that they're going to open up the buyback window next year, especially if all these treasuries roll over and they're forced to refinance at higher rates? Are the banks going to want to buy those treasuries? And that's why the treasury is opening up. I mean, the buy. banks essentially have to buy the treasuries. What if they want the cash? Um then the Fed's going to have to put more money in the system. So more likely what happens is when the when the Fed starts to, or sorry, when the Treasury starts to issue more debt, it's going to drain dollars out of the banking system. That's going to squeeze an already bank failure after bank failure system. Um, and one way or the other, it's, it's going to accelerate in my opinion, QE's already started, but it's gonna it's gonna accelerate the process. That this period where they've been under this this fake debt debt ceiling battle, what it's done is provide the banking system more reserves than it would otherwise have available to it. So, in practical terms, this means more inflation is coming. Um, it, it will, I think, accelerate the money printing, the need to, to print mo- and then, more money. And 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 you think more the bank runs will continue. Well, the bank runs are continuing underneath the surface. Yeah. This this marginally, um, as as the treasury starts issuing more debt and taking reserves out of the system, creates a, a you know, more competition for those dollars. And will the banking crisis accelerate in the toward the end of July, middle of July, when Q two financials begin hitting the market and it becomes glaringly obvious that some of the banks have been experiencing deposit drains i think i, I mean i i think that that's uh idiosyncratic but mm-hmm. inevitably like there are still bank runs happening so people but it's not really above the surface because they're not reporting financials yet correct yeah but it's i mean but it's happening um credit is still shrinking uh in totality which is creating kind of the the weakest chain you know weakest banks in the chain are are, are getting exposed and it's happening right now. It's just, you learn about it periodically when those reports come out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you for joining us this week. Yeah. I just don't shoot him, Marty. I'm not going to shoot Parker. I could never do that. You're going to shoot me. No, I'm not going to shoot. I only shoot Ben Carmen. Oh, um, Is... well I gotta, I gotta call it one anyways. Okay. So I usually, I usually hesitate to hop in here, but, um, oftentimes Matt will bring like five V one. In Nashville, and <laughs> I, I, was, I was only gonna, I was only gonna catch him when we could, you know. Uh, so you've noticed that, Parker? Two, two, <laughs> two to one. Yeah, I, I pay attention. Uh, no, for I'm the a, freaks listening at home, I, I do, I do not give Marty a heads up when I do that. Yeah, I, yeah. We ninja. <laughs> we'll just keep yeah. ninja hopping you whenever you're solo. I would, I would love you guys should ninja. I, I will join any time. It's great to have a pretty face on the opposite side instead of Marty's. Ouch, ouch, ouch. It's good to be here. Any uh, parting words of wisdom for the freaks out there? Um, I'm going to Nashville. Um, We're looking forward to hosting you. Yeah, in June. So looking forward to that. Uh, that making really... good progress on Gradual and Suddenly. Yes. Um, books in production, uh, in the production We're phase. We're excited. Are so, you going to read your own audiobook? No. Do not have a, do not have a voice what? for audio if we get if we get 200 retweets if we get 200 retweets on the rhr stream today will you will you do the audiobook no (laughs) (laughs) let's see if we could get 200 retweets still though just 
put on. You heard it here, freaks. You, you guys put it out to be like, if we get 200 retweets, Parker might reconsider yeah. whether or not. He's going to he's gonna read the audio. In a very non committal way. <laughs> well, I'm excited for the book regardless, but you should yeah. consider it. Well, thank you for the update on the treasury account. Yeah, uh, I think like the ultimate thing that matters is the amount of cash that's sitting in the banks, and this will marginally drain in a not insignificant way about 300 billion if if that's if that's how much cash came out of the banking system would be about 10 percent of all dollars um and just something to pay attention to thanks parker this, this is what you get what at rabbit hole recap matt's at the park we're at the commons there's a lot of smart minds just walking around yeah let's talk about how busy it was in the commons yesterday yeah we had, you know it was popping in here it was popping the fetty guys are just behind this wall plugging away and uh, the mutiny guys are over there to my left and a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah. So, um, love it. Look, look forward to being in the park too. All right. All right. See you guys. Enjoy your call. Thanks, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Mandibles. See, that's my thing. You could have exited left. You'd have to go right. It's Thanks for not shooting Parker. I could never shoot Parker. And I, by the way, I feel bad. You, you have a very pretty face. Thank you. That hurt. No. That hurt. I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah, that Treasury General account is something to pay attention to. Yeah, so the it issue... just all sounds like such a fucking scam. A fucking Ponzi scheme. Yeah. Stamble stack sats. No way to live your life. No, that's... I mean, I had the uh, quarterly update with Matthew Mazinxious earlier today, and that's one thing that that quarterly report really drives home is it takes him quite a while to actually accumulate and organize the data of each individual central bank after every quarter they take time to release the data and it really just drives home that bitcoin is a triple entry accounting system that amends itself every block (laughs) like you get the data immediately every 10 minutes yeah i mean once you find bitcoin just everything else just seems like such a fucking shit coin um, by the way, I just we have them in the live audience, and I just want to shout out the best journalists in the Bitcoin space. The Bitcoin Bugle is is joining us live. I I have a feeling they join us live many times, but this is the first time they did it from their actually their actual account. Yeah, the Bitcoin Bugle. You'll be happy to know that uh, the Infowars show will not be on Infowars, but Whitney and I have talked. We might do we might do a monthly show at some point. So. It would just be TFTC. We just talk once a month. Same thing we've been Are doing. Are you going to also shill supplements or uh, leave that part out? No, I'm not a big supplement guy. I only like to shill things I use. Um, I don't take any supplements. We did have that one reading. episode sponsored by Dick Pills. This one's brought to you by Dick Pills. Because I read in the Bugle that you're going to start shilling supplements. Have you watched too much porn? Does your dick not work anymore? <laughs> take the Dick Pill. Stop watching porn. You won't have dick pill that needs. Okay, freaks? It's that simple. Uh. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Yeah, no. No supplements. The only supplement huge, I take. Huge shout out to Parker Lewis. I appreciate that. That gentleman. Yes. What a great dude. Yes. Um, all right. We got a list. Big one. Got to keep going through it. John Delaney, like, how can you ask me if the Mandibles is really realistic after listening to Parker for the last 10 minutes? Comedian John Delaney's in the live chat? I think it's probably a different John Delaney. <laughs> yeah. Would be cool. Would have been cool. Uh, Swan dropped some news last week, almost a week from today, or it was yesterday, or tomorrow. It will have officially been a week. They are basically moving partners, moving away from Prime Trust which is great to see. They're going to bring as much as possible in-house. They're changing custodians no. right now. They're changing custodians. They want Do they, I don't I don't think they plan to bring things in-house. They're just changing their providers. Yeah, so platform sovereignty and optionality with plenty of cash in the bank and a couple of centuries of experience across our leadership team. We're dramatically accelerating our plans for increased redundancy and independence across compliance, settlement, and custody. We're actively working on MTLs, so they're bringing the MTLs in-house. That's what I meant. Filing for the New York Bit license. God bless you guys. 
uh, and determining appropriate regulatory paths in jurisdictions around the world. We are investing heavily in technology and partnerships to soon have options of redundancy across custody, liquidity, fiat payment providers, security, <coughs> and hardware wallet support. This optionality will also enable support for new account types and scenarios for families, minors, tax advantage accounts, and integrations. It's good um, to see. Yeah, I mean, look, I've said it on the show many times, like Prime Trust is fucked and uh, anyone who relies on Prime Trust should be looking for new partners or bringing things in-house. Um, Swan appears to have gone with BitGo for actual Bitcoin custody. Uh, BitGo is an obvious choice. They've been in the space for a, a long, long time. Little known um, fact, Mike Belshi, founder of BitGo, invented Multisig. Um, besides, uh, the Bitfinex hack, they've had an amazing track record. Uh, I think we've talked about the Bitfinex hack in the past, but shortcuts were made because of regulatory reasons. And that doesn't solely responsibility for that doesn't solely go on Bitco. It also goes on Bitfinex on how they wanted to have everyone with their own independent multi-sig wallet. Um, so Bitco is a good option here. And then what's really interesting is uh for the actual order execution what's the name what are they called fortress trust let me make sure i'm getting yeah it's fortress um that's actually that was created by the my understanding is that was created by the um prime trust founders uh left prime trust and then created a competing prime trust with a different name um but yeah Good to see they they figured that out instead of just losing state after state as Prime Trust loses their licenses. Yes. It was formed by leading crypto regulators, bankers, and blockchain experts to provide innovators with compliant financial infrastructure to build and scale. So the much bullshit buzzwords. Custody and payments infrastructure. Oh my God. <clears throat> Regardless, shout out to Swan eliminating weak points in that stack, primarily Prime Trust. Next up on the list, BitMEX is renewing the grants for Rene Picard. Did I see they gave one to Amidi as well? Is that on the list? Uh, was Amidi Spiral? Might have been Spiral. Let me check. But yeah, great to see uh, BitMEX yeah, continuing their grant program. They provide a lot of open source grants. Yes, so Renee got one from BitMEX. Amidi got one from Spiral. These were Love to see it. announced last week. Um, um, by the way, uh, we have been uh, getting a ton of applications to OpenSats. Uh, so if you're an open source contributor looking for funding, go to opensats.org slash apply. We are trying to get those grants processed as soon as possible. Well funded. Shout out to Gigi over there for absolutely crushing it. Yes. Um, PyPy, the Python package index, is working to minimize stored user data following a DOG subpoena. While data demands from authorities are commonplace among large commercial internet services like GitHub, we're unaware of previous public reports about subpoenas directed at open source software package registries. So the Python pa package index open source project is trying to defend its users, but it's also another instance of government overreach into open source projects. Yeah. I mean, there's three things to unpack here and why I put it on the list is, um, uh, first of all, you know, governments will, pressure centralized companies to get um, or centralized entities to get any kind of information that that those entities have. Um, so we should operate under that threat model always. Um, uh, huge shout out to them for actually disclosing this when they were actually legally able to disclose it. Um, and uh, they are doing the right path, which is to try and limit the amount of user information they have in general. So when future requests come in, uh, they just will have less information to hand over. And that's how everyone operating a centralized entity should be proceeding here. They should be trying to reduce that liability on themselves in terms of how much user data they have for the sake of their users, but also for the sake of, of themselves. 
Agreed. Uh, but again, going back to this like government overreach and what exactly happened in March <clears throat> in April of this year, uh, the Python Software Foundation received three subpoenas for PyPy, particular PyPy user data. All three subpoenas were issued by the Department of Justice. Uh, the Python Software Foundation was not provided any context on the legal circumstances surrounding these subpoenas in total. User data related to five PyPy usernames were requested. They requested names, usernames, screen names, addresses, including mailing, residential addresses, business address, and email address, connection records, records of session times and durations, and temporarily assigned network address, length of service, and type of services utilized, telephone or instrument numbers, means, and source of payment of any such services. Records of all Python package index packages uploaded by giving usernames ip download log of a python package index uploaded by the given username so they wanted a lot of data and they're not at that's the other thing too like when it comes to giving up the data with these subpoenas you'd think that the department of justice would say hey here's why we need this data and they essentially just said hey no give us the data no nope. no context yeah you don't get context what do you think? This is a free country, Marty? No. No. We don't live in a free country, freaks. They're trying to lock you in. Building software. They need to know all your information. That's the other thing. We don't have this on the list, but um, speaking of WorldCoin, the Orb, OpenAI, Sam Altman was on Capitol Hill last week. I don't think we talked about it, but he's essentially... Fuck him. Looking to, like he went to Capitol Hill and the conversation was around AI. What do we need to do to ensure it doesn't kill all of us? And Sam basically took that opportunity to advocate <clears throat> for a licensing scheme, essentially where you need to get a license from the government to create these large language models. And the tactic there is to essentially create a regulatory moat for open AI what they do they would certainly get grandfathered into that many such cases many such cases this is something that we've seen coinbase do um you know you see it all the time large companies want regulations to happen we've seen uber do it um large companies want to see regulations come in because they can field a team of hundreds of lawyers and comply with those regulations but small upstarts cannot and they cannot come in and compete with them Yes. So they weaponize the government against potential competition and they hurt users and everyone else in the process. And Sam Altman can go fuck himself. Noted. Noted. But it is scary if he's successful in he lobbying probably will the be. government to get these licenses. Th this is why open source is important, right? Because this is how you get around this shit, right? It's like... Um, like BitPay can make as big of a regulatory mode as they want to in terms of accepting Bitcoin as a regulated company, um, but they can't stop BTC Pay Server from getting deployed. Um, I, on, I recently on Silo Dispatch, I had uh, Phoenix Ammunition, the Michigan-based ammo manufacturer, and he just accepts Bitcoin using BT, BTC Pay Server. Like they can't stop that because it's an open source project. Um, so this is why the open source movement is so important and yeah. the regulatory capture will continue. Well, it's important to mention that there is an open source movement within AI. And since this is now an AI podcast, we should mention that, uh, I talked to Paul Miller about it yesterday because he's pretty, I love Paul. He's pretty online and tuned into what's going on in the AI world. And I, mean, I think that Google memo that leaked like a month or two ago, seems to be coming true. Paul and others I've talked to that are experimenting with AI are saying all the open source large language models are beginning to outcompete the open AIs and the bards of the world, which is good to see. And I do wonder, um, and we've seen this in uh, other open source projects um, where, where tech companies will take uh, false stuff right and then they'll build on top of it and they'll keep it proprietary and closed um so it's important to realize that uh, while it's great that we have open source llms uh like it doesn't mean that 
private companies will not necessarily use those. And then second on the, on the, and then keep, you know, like keep their users siloed regardless. Right. Um, but second, I wonder, there's like this thing with AI, which is like this whole idea of these models is that you train them on data sets. Right. And I wonder, and I was thinking about this since we last talked about it. Um, someone like Google, right? Like Google is a extremely effective surveillance company. Um, they have a shit ton of data. Um, a lot of that data is not public data. Uh, so they could be using the same model. Uh, they can be using the same open source, you know, AI implementation or what, however you want to refer to it as, you know, any other person that has access to this open, it's open source, right? Everyone has access to it, but they could train it on information that other people don't necessarily have access to. Now to steel man, my own argument, um, some AI people are saying that you could then train a competing AI against their AI in that situation, um, where it just like constantly asks questions of the AI, but who knows, like maybe you need to scan your eyeball to access it. Maybe you need to have a blue check with the eyeball scan and, you know, live in the pod and have the chip in order to access it. And then you get rate limited if you keep asking it multiple questions in a row to try and train your AI against it. So, um, I just, I, you know, I'm not an AI fear monger. I think innovation is good in general. And I think also like let a thousand flowers bloom, like can't stop it. Um, so you just live with the repercussions. But um, I push back against like an idea of complacency in terms of uh, closely held, very integrated with go corrupt governments, large surveillance tech companies, not absolutely dominating the space. Because I have a feeling that in five years, like the majority of people that are using any kind of AI tools will be using Google's, will be using Apple's, right we'll be using facebook's um that is probably the direction we're going well facebook open source theirs i believe yeah okay i think hey i'm gonna say it's gonna be controversial you're not gonna like it at all i think zuck has had a a, a, a come to jesus moment he's getting like all ripped he's fighting people he's doing the murph he's like getting his tea back maybe maybe he he's calling out the fbi Guy, guy gets a blue check and then just starts defending Zuckerberg. <laughs> I'm not defending him. I'm saying I'm, I'm noticing some things. We got a Zuck stand. We got a Zuck stand. I'm not Zuck stand. I'm not officially. I'm not officially a Zuck stand yet, but I'm on the Zuck watch. Marty it's, loves Zuck's body. I haven't had Facebook in like ten years. No, almost. Marty's a, no porn guy, but but looking at uh, videos of. Uh, Zuckerberg working out does not count as porn according to Marty. No, it's not working out. He was he was <laughs> he was wrestling another man, rolling around on the ground with another man. Oh, oh <laughs> really glad you clarified. Uh, Zuck cucking. I'm not Zuck cucking. I'm just observing. Okay, freaks. Okay, closer. Just observing. Um, I had something. That I want to <laughs> transition to, but it got lost in the uh, the Zuck cucking talk. Um, all right, let's just keep going down the list. It'll come back to me. This is cool to see. Umbrel introduces a pre-built home server specifically engineered for Umbrel OS. Um, yeah, so I mean, I thought this was cool because we we had talked about how Start9 um, offered that really great middle, what was it called? The Start9 One or the Start1? um which was a similar price point i think star nine might be a little bit cheaper but also like a proper intel processor uh not a raspberry pi like very fast ssd like this is i want to see more of this right which is this these pre-built self-hosting um pretty reasonably powerful machines uh that are at good price points with good ux like this is a good really great direction to see um They've gotten reasonable flack for not accepting Bitcoin uh, on the sales of this, which is hilarious. I, I personally enjoyed the people that said, why don't you host a BTC pay server on an umbral? Because um, that's just <laughs> ironic. Uh, but um, 
and start nine deserves a lot of credit because start nine essentially has a separate bitcoin store uh where you can pay in bitcoin and they actually give you a discount uh to pay in bitcoin because they want your bitcoin which is exactly the kind of incentive uh we want to see bitcoin merchants using agreed so this Umbrell Home is $699. It is a 2.9 gigahertz quad core CPU, two terabyte SSD, 16 gigabyte RAM, gigabit Ethernet. Um, so it's a pretty formidable machine there you're going to get. I'm, I'm just going to try and meme this into existence. Uh, if you work for one of these node companies, um, self hosting companies, like I think Umbrell and Start9 consider them way more than nodes, um, self hosting in a box. Let's do easy raid configs. Like give me two drives. One backs up the other. That'd be dope. You heard it here first. We got a product request on RHR from Matt himself. Let's get some redundancy going. We have freak sharing and pub keys in the live chat. I'd love to see that. Um, I forgot to ask Parker about Noster, but at least it's not a blue check. Oh, that's what I want to say. This blue check hate. I'm gonna go tell the other blue checks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, blue, blue checks are so sensitive. <laughs> yeah, it's just it never ends. You know, you pay the eight bucks, you cuck to the eight bucks, and monthly you get rid ridiculed, ridiculed. Um, we are on to the software <laughs> update section of the show. Before we get into that. We're going to read Boost from last week and three weeks ago. <laughs> I forgot that since we did well, the we're live on show, stage, right? we didn't read any. We didn't read any Boost from the live sh <clears throat> from the show before the live show. So I'm going to go back to Rabbit Hole recap. Two fifty two mempools running hot, and you know, I'm a good host. I'm an honorable man because I'm going back to read these Boost, and you'll understand why I say that as I read them. Sixty nine thousand. <laughs> 96 sats, palindrome boost from Bitcoin 3 us. I've learned so much listening to TFCC, RHR. Thank you for the awesome work you're doing. Wading into the mempool slash mempools debate, I think the mempool should be both singular and a collective noun, rather like the way we interchangeably use the word blockchain. There are, of course, many identical Bitcoin blockchains. If there was only one, it would be a total disaster. Got to love the nuances of Bitcoin. I, I like wrong. That. I like that. I don't. Think I so. appreciate your support, free. The difference. The difference is everyone's mempool is not necessarily the same, but everyone's copy of the Bitcoin blockchain is the same because we have consensus layer. Like there's actually consensus on, you know, through yes, the through proof the of work. There's actually consensus on what the you know what that Bitcoin blockchain state is. I, I, with mempools, it's a fluid thing. Through many different mempools, like Marty's mempool might have different, not might not have exactly the same transactions as my mempool. This is true. At Svein all five fifty five thousand five hundred fifty five sats fives across the board. Palindrome boost. Thanks for the pure signal you provide every week in this ocean of fud. It is an ocean of fud. It's true. Swim, swim, freaks. We're trying to provide good discourse here, funny discourse, valuable discourse. Swim. The discourse has been terrible recently online. Bear markets are always yes. They always get feisty. Yes. At you Quinn Solo, at Quinn Solo, fifty-five thousand sats. Don't you fucking dare stop cursing on this show, you assholes! In the relatable way it. you communicate, are the only goddamn reason I listen to the show. Don't bitch out and self-censor. People are asking you to stop cursing because kids are in the car. Then don't fucking listen in the car. <laughs> Or teach your bitch ass kids that there are some words you say and others wow. you don't. And don't put a disclaimer on this or we've already lost. For real though, don't change a thing. You guys are awesome. Shit. Well, I will say, you know, that's three weeks old, uh, but I never stopped cursing. So <laughs> thanks for the support, freak. I think you've been good so far today. I'm, I'm the only one cursing. It's because I had to read them. Uh, and then top four boosts from last week's rip, 254, no rest for the wicked, at Knack Ass Immersion, 80,085 sats of boobs boost. See you at Bitblock Boom in Austin. Stay humble, stack sats. 
Great advice. At Wank Spooge. It's one of my favorite names. Wank Spooge. <laughs> 69,696 sats, a 69 pound drum boost, pee pee poo poo. <laughs> I hope you're proud of yourself, Wang Spooge. <laughs> Appreciate the support. <laughs> At Eric995000 sats, stay humble, stack sats. Thank you, Eric. Great advice. And then At Mav215000 sats, humbly stacking. Eric99 is a real one. He really is. Across the board, across all shows. Thank you. Thank you, freaks, for, for supporting us. It's uh, It's really great. We appreciate it. It keeps us going. It really even does. when we're even when we're delirious, even when you don't want to continue the show because Marty got a blue check, <laughs> just every day in and out, just the support really means the world. I get to go to Bohemian Grove now. <laughs> <laughs> They're letting me go to Bohemian Grove, dude. I Was that blue... blue check only? Yeah, it's blue check only. They've expanded the. Uh... I don't know what that is. Is that like a thing in Austin? No. It's in California, I believe. No. It's like an Illuminati thing. And I'm I only got the blue check <laughs> because because I want to do some investigative journalism on Bohemian Grove. Okay. Yeah, okay. There's gonna be so many excuses. So many excuses. Oh, you haven't fallen down the Bohemian Grove rabbit hole yet, do you? I mean, it sounds like you just admitted to being part of the Illuminati, Marty. I have the option. To go to Bohemian Grove and decide if I want to join because I have a blue check. I'm just going to go and uncover all the the terrible stuff that they do. Okay, we're waiting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> David yeah, Humphrey. David Humphrey. <laughs> uh, I love this show. Software updates. Amherst version zero point five two point two. Has been released. <clears throat> it's Amethyst. Ame- Amethyst. It's the Android Nostra client. Amherst is a college. Amethyst, you're right. So that's out there if you're running <laughs> Amethyst on your Android device. Go update. Uh, nothing too crazy that I can see. Samurai Dojo version 1.2.0 has been released. For running Dojo. For running a Ronin Dojo. You got new software. Well, this is vanilla Dojo. Ronin Dojo will then package this and ship yeah, it. You run it on your Ronin, right? Um, Fountain version 0.7.0 has been released. Big update, big UX update. You've been using the app. You probably noticed it's a lot faster, it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot cooler. Um, Fountain guys are really proud about this. They've been working hard to improve the UX of the app. I've been talking to them, and that's one of the biggest feedbacks that freaks and others who are using the Fountain app to listen and to support podcasts, listen to and to support podcasts, uh, have brought up is the UX is a little slow, um, a little unintuitive, and they made some massive changes to that to improve that. So if you're listening via Fountain, you should notice that update. Uh, if you haven't updated yet, I highly recommend it. The app is much faster. Uh, it's it's working well. And they also announced they're going to be rolling out uh, live streams through Fountain. Yes, um, which we will be participating in. Yeah, not ready yet, but soon. And we have Logan. Uh, transcripts as well will be added. They now support, they are added, transcripts. So we need to add that podcast transcript tag to our feeds because we do, we do get the transcripts, so we could we could plug those in there. I will say, really yeah. appreciate the Fountain team, um, but uh, the transcripts thing is like another one of their dark incentives uh, to use their custodial wallet, which I do not love. Um, so, like Marty. Be, because Marty uses his own node for TFTC and he wants them separate, he uses the custodial wallet for RHR for his portion of the split. Uh, so we get free transcripts for RHR. Um, but because I don't have my podcast claimed through Fountain on Dispatch, I don't get free transcripts. Um, well, we use an AI service for TFTC. It's pretty cheap. How much is that, Logan? 
I'm, obviously, you can do transcripts outside of Fountain, but my point is is that it's free transcripts if you, you know, are part of the the full Fountain vertical integration, including the custodial wallet. Yeah, but they'll still populate your transcripts if yeah, you, just, you, know, you have to pay. Everything yeah. ever has transcripts now. You stick stuff in Slack, it has transcripts. I think Adobe has transcripts. If if Brian Bishop shows up to a meetup, you'll have a transcript. It's a beautiful thing. Those are the those are the best transcripts. It caused a lot of drama at Bitblock Boom 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Bitsteins. One of the one of the most epic talks of all time. Probably meme warfare. Probably my favorite Bitcoin presentation of all time. Yeah. That was a good one. Shout out to Bitstein. Shout out to Bitstein. Actually saw him yesterday. Had a long conversation with him. He's doing well, if anybody was wondering. Nunchuck version, desktop version, one point nine point one nine has been released. Uh, they've enabled inheritance claiming, which is pretty cool. They have a new co-signing policy uh, and improved performance. It's running Nunchuck on desktop. Be aware of that. That's actually, I met another Bitcoiner yesterday for lunch. Uh, who's a financial planner, and he was talking about the desperate need for better estate planning for Bitcoiners, particularly if a Bitcoiner unfortunately passes away and they don't have plans to pass their keys down to their next of kin. Just want to get that out there. There's a very big need for that in the space. No Unchained has their inheritance protocol. Very interested to see, Rob, if you're still in the chat, what do you think? Do you think Miniscript makes it easy to incorporate inheritance protocols for Bitcoiners? He just set a time lock. Of course he does. All he do, you ask him any question, all he does is answer Miniscript. <laughs> what a stupid question, Marty. <laughs> hey, maybe we have an intellectually honest freak in Rob Hamilton. He'll say, you know what? Actually, probably not the best use case for it, but we'll see. Anyway, I uh, John yeah, saying that dude needs to do his own research. Why don't we just have like a protocol or an app? It seems the reason I mentioned it because it seems like Nunchuck is thinking about this and solving it, and that's open source and there's, there's still there's still a lot of work to be done on the inheritance side. It's really great to see teams like Nunchuck, teams like Anchor Watch working on these things, teams like Liana with their mini script wallet working on these things. Um, Casa and Unchained, there's many. Um, you know, Bitcoin specifically, if what you're depending on your threat model, you know, there will always be friction here because Bitcoin requires so much personal responsibility. Uh, it requires actual personal responsibility, unlike other things in our lives, like our bank account, where it's just completely custodial relationship. And it's just, it's important for people to keep in <laughs> mind that it's a balancing act because. You know, inheritance itself can be a uh, attack vector. Yes. So, like, if your heirs can easily get your coin, like, <laughs> like it, it, a lot of times that means that you know the heirs can be pressured, or uh, whoever the centralized entity is handling it can be pressured by governments. Um, it you know becomes it becomes a thing. But uh, so you just have to assess all your situation. You have to assess your situation, your threat model. You know, maybe not. Uh, it doesn't have to be all or nothing, right? Like your whole stack doesn't have to be in the easy to inherit section, uh, like an easy to inherit wallet. Like you can have a portion that's, you know, like the Sopranos, like the black bag in the wall or whatever, the duffel bag in the wall. Um, the banana stands. The banana stand, right? But just don't have them burn the banana stand down. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like they're, they're it's it's a balancing act, and there's never. I don't think there'll ever be an easy answer. Personally, I don't think there'll ever be an easy answer because you you know it just depends on your threat model and your situation and and what trade offs you want to make. But it could definitely be easier. Yes. Next up on the software update list. Version 1.1.5 of Agora Desk has been released. Have you ever talked about Agora Desk? It's like a Monero app. It's Monero and Bitcoin. Um, it's P2P trading. Yeah. 
It actually has decent usage, so we're tracking it now. All right, sweet. Sweet. Next up on the list, RoboSats version. Speaking of peer-to-peer trading, RoboSats version 0.5.1 alpha has been released. Uh, you can now use Core Lightning as a RoboSats coordinator node vendor. It is, however, experimental, not recommended on mainnet. So if you want to help them test it out on Signet, definitely do that. Uh, adding the optionality of Lightning implementations is important. Huge shout out to the RoboSats team. Great product. Another great product coming up. Ride the Lightning release version 0.14.0 beta. Uh, this covers the breaking changes. Wait, what What do you mean by beta? <laughs> Sorry. Continue. You said it's beta. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> okay, continue. You didn't describe it as, you didn't just say it's Sorry. A... I'm just being a child. Ride the Lightning is not a it is a beta <laughs> app, but it's not beta. <laughs> Distinction here. Uh, yeah, if you're running this, this covers the Core Lightning 23.05 uh, update that that broke some things uh, and also a few minor UX enhancement. Um, so Core Lightning users should note that this update depends on CLL REST version 0.10.3 and Core Lightning version 23.05. If you're running any version older than that, uh, you should not upgrade to this UI. The changes are not backwards compatible with older versions of Core Lightning. So be aware. I love RTL. Um, David Humphrey is asking in the chat, chat about a Bitcoin quant platform that allows arbitrage trading, and I'm not going to say the name of it. D- no, dude, just stay humble and stack sets. It sounds never, like a scam. I've never heard of this either. Let me look Same. it up. Let me look it up. Let's give it some screen time. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. Definitely don't look it up on air. It's a bot. Yeah, all of those things are uh, they're, pr- they're pretty much guaranteed to be bullshit. If you go to the if website, they can make they can make money off of it. They would just make money off of it and not sell you the fucking scam. But dude, it was featured on TechCrunch, Forbes, Y Combinator, Business Insider, and Yahoo Finance. Scam. <laughs> Stay humble, stack ads. Be aware. There are no shortcuts, freaks. Stack Duo. Version 1.0.7 has been released. Added a custom pin length, which is good to see. Makes it harder to guess your pin. That's about it. I think they're going to add Whirlpool soon. Oh, yeah. Nostur. The UR. (laughs) Not a great name. Nostur. Uh, Version 1.0.44 has been released as an iOS Nostra client by Fabian Lockman. Um, looks pretty, pretty clean, too. Looks like they're copying Twitter, like UI for UI here. Have Elect- not used it. Electrum version 4.4.4 has been released. Nothing in the release notes there. Well, Logan, click Electrum on the top. Then go to, do you see change log or? Never on GitHub. Scroll down further. Is it just one on something on this list? It shows. Yeah. Change. Change. Changes. Change log. Do you know how to use release notes? Click release notes. Control F. It's right there. It's right under read me. Up, down. Yeah. Release notes. There you go. Read that, Marty. QML GUI, fix creating multi-sig wallets involving BIP39 seeds. Fix cannot scroll to open a lightning channel. Wizard confirmed seed screen to normalize white spaces. Fix Asser. What else? QT GUI, better handle. That's it. Nice. Well, huge shout out to the Electrum team. They've been building for a long time. Very robust project. One of the oldest projects in the space. My first wallet was Electrum. Yeah. I mean, now I just use Sparrow, but my shout out remains. Ellen Scribe, backup lightning channel state with inscriptions. This is kind of cool. Is it? Yeah. Don't you think so? <laughs> So 
So you, you inscriptions you encoded on chain. I'm just trying to think of having your channel back up on yeah. chain. Is... So you know how lightning channel backups work, right? Yes. Ongoing. Consistent. Every time every time you route a payment, you have to do a new backup. So um historically like the way a lot of people do it is like they have like a USB drive connected to their node um that gets updated every time and then if you're if for some reason your node fails when you restore that channel backup it doesn't like give you your channels back it just force closes all your channels but at least you get your money back um so my basic understanding of this is they would just inscribe that data continuously into the bitcoin blockchain um could be expensive sounds expensive to me it sounds like you're just trying to make sure you win your mempool bet by highlighting <laughs> this every freak should go inscribe all their channel <laughs> no that is not what i'm saying i just think it's novel and interesting it's a trade-off balance right but like if you have a high value lightning node it could be a cool way of backing up your channels We're just Marty, I don't need to encourage first of all or just beef up I, your your node stack and I do encourage well it'd be nice if these you know pre-builds had raid in them <laughs> goes back to my earlier statement uh but uh yeah I mean I encourage Bitcoin uh usage uh I've never actually encouraged inscription usage um but yeah people should use Bitcoin more often is very self-serving yeah for my for my <laughs> break even bet with you because it just keeps being double or nothing my hundred thousand my two hundred thousand sats i have on the line with you i will once again tell the freaks that it will cost me significantly more if mempools never clear again than this bet it will cost us all significantly more i was talking to someone at the park uh a couple days ago he's like shit dude i wasn't thinking like like if Balaji is correct, like fees are going to be ex extremely expensive. I was like, yeah, dude, get it in your head. <clears throat> Listen to the Balaji episode tomorrow. Freaks. He might be correct. Very. Anyway, fees Don't... are going to go up and everyone should just prepare for it. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Logi lays out a very compelling case for fees are going to go up. Beware. There are currently 295,432 transactions in mempools, mempool. It's 220 blocks of worth of transactions. Oh, that's, oh, that's interesting because you read Clark's, but Clark's is a is probably a 300 meg mempool, so you don't get all the transactions. Mempool.space has the expanding mempool. Currently a one gigabyte. Yeah, there you go. And like, this is like, this is our, we should all be grateful that we get to practice and get comfortable using on-chain Bitcoin while fees are still incredibly cheap. And it will, you know, because otherwise, like learning in the future is going to be significantly more expensive. Yeah. Here's one thing I do want to highlight while we're on this topic. Again, I think I've been pretty clear. Uh, Logan, go to insights.brains.com and then on the homepage, go down to daily mining revenue and let's put it at six months. Uh, we have John Delaney saying testnet exists. Testnet is a shit coin and should just do everything on mainnet. Yeah, zoom in here. <laughs> I mean, this is just interesting. Um, so yeah, Ordinal's inscriptions became popular at the beginning of this year. Mining revenue in dollar terms, January 1 was $15 million. Uh, it spiked up to $41.3 million during that massive congestion event in early May. Can, and now it's can we change this to Bitcoin terms? Yeah, go to transaction fees next to it. I think looking at this in dollar terms is just, it doesn't make any sense. And then click... It's uh, better to look at a Bitcoin terms. Click the yellow away. There we go. And so, yeah. Similarly, using the same thing, 
Gen 1. Uh, average feeds per block. And I believe this is a 2016 block. Oh, right now it's of that day. Um, so of the course of 144 blocks that day on Gen 1 was 11,700,000 sats. During the crazy congestion spike, got up to 4 billion um, or excuse me, 400 million, 93, 930,000 sats. Uh, I mean, right before that spike was when Marty tweeted out the inscriptions fat is over. <laughs> I, I have it on good authority that people just spam the network intentionally because of that. I'm it's kidding. true. They were listening to rabbit hole recap. Uh, but now it's settled around 53 million, 700,000 sats and fees uh, per block on average as it stands today. And so that's up like five X since January. So since, since it's up about five X since Matt said, mempools will never clear again. <laughs> and to be clear, fee, um, <laughs> overall block subsidy isn't up five X. Obviously you have, or block reward isn't up five X. You have the subsidy, which is 6.25 Bitcoin. So as of right now, each block is bringing in about seven, um, or 6.8 Bitcoin. In revenues. Twice in a row. Bitcoins? Few. <laughs> you said Bitcoin for both of those. As you should. It makes sense. I did. Be aware. Uh, BTC Pay Server version 1.10.0 has been released. If you think the plural of Bitcoin is Bitcoins, you're wrong and you should feel bad. And you disagree with Satoshi, so you should really feel bad. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not oh, no. a Satoshi worshiper. I leave that to the blue checks. <laughs> I know you have your Satoshi underwear that you wear on show day every day, okay? Dude, you're not supposed to share that. <laughs> He's got a, Mac just has like a Guy Fox image guarding his junk. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, Great style. Uh, BTC Pay server update. Uh, there was a substantial disk space consumption, so they're removing all data pertaining to the past webhook deliveries. Uh, generally used for debugging integrations will be regularly purged. Hereafter, any webhook delivery data older than two months will be automatically deleted. If you want to read the blog post explaining this, they laid that out. Uh, <laughs> this is hilarious. There's something wrong with your blog. Go to the blog post link. BTC Pay server, something wrong with the time on your blog post. Uh, it's May 32nd, 2023. <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> nice. Sh- should be June 1st. Off by one. <laughs> Off by one. Created a day. May 32nd. We should have, like, like, why do we, why do we listen to, uh, oh, do you want to get into conspiracy? Like, like why do why do months end when they end? We should have sixty days in a year and a month. Well, apparently they're supposed to be <laughs> only be they're supposed to only be ten months. But it says who? If, well, if you go to calendar, think about this. Think about this. Think about this. Oh whoa, well, okay. I'm Starting, thinking Marty. I guess they go September, October, November, December. That's seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. But it's really uh, nine. It's month nine. 10, 11, and 12. Like there was a 10 month calendar. And then we added. Which one's got added? Months. It's the Caesars. Caesars. They were like, they both, t- two of them needed months, Julius and Augustus. They yes. were like, we need, we need months now. Yeah. We had a 10 month even day calendar, I believe at one point. How many days were in each month? 10 month calendar. Look at Logan providing some value to the show. We should just have one month. Each month of 30. Finally, months. right? Finally doing something here. <laughs> Thanks, Logan. We appreciate you. Yeah, and the year was only 304 days long. This is interesting. Wow. They added days to the year. Yeah. I can't believe we let them get away with that. Neither can I. There were some. Do you guys want to watch like a conspiracy video? No. <laughs> well, how long is it? Let me find it. Um, no, it's pretty good. What? What is it? It's about the months? Wait a second. Wait a second. Who the fuck gives a shit? I was joking when I said that. Why do we agree to how many days in a month? I don't give a shit. We're going to use block height for past time and 
future time, whatever. It's a solved problem. What else do we have on the list, Mark? You're going to look at this? I'll look at the list. About time you do something around here. I made the fucking list. You just <laughs> have to read it. One thing left on the list. Insect bunker, Nostra key <laughs> delegation. This is pretty big. Key delegation on Nostra is like a big problem to solve. Um, so the premise of NSEC bunker is that you can store Nostra private keys, NSECs, uh, use them remotely under certain policies, but these keys can never be exfiltrated from NSEC bunker. All communication with NSEC bunker happens through encrypted ephemeral Nostra events. You're essentially nice. creating, and this is by Pablo, who's doing a shit ton of work over in the Nostra ecosystem. So yeah, this is so you don't have to plug your keys into Albi, Collider, Domus, Primal. Pablo's like a one-man Nostra machine. He'd shout out to Pablo. Yes. I mean, I just... I just hope whatever we come up with doesn't mean I have to, like, rotate my Nostra key. I don't see why you would have to. I mean, there's probably a lot of easier ways to do it where you'd have to generate a new Nostra key pair. Create, like, a but That would HD. be annoying because... Create like an we'd, HD wallet for Noster. We'd have to like uh, redo all of our like network topography and stuff. It'd be annoying. Yeah, man, you should be able to have like a parent private key and child private keys that reference that that give you access to your to your account data. Sort of incorporate them with each other. I just talked out of my ass, but that makes sense, doesn't it? Well, I mean, the identifier is the public key, right? And then I think, yeah, I I don't know. The identifier is the public key, though, the master public key, which is just a single public key, private key pair right now. Let's see. It's not an easy problem, in my understanding. Because, like, the way Nostra works is every message is, is signed by your by your single private key, your fixed private key, every message is signed by your fixed private key and can naturally, you know, through public key, private key cryptography, like can be verified that it's signed by the owner of whatever public key is here. So we'll, <clears throat> we'll just read the whole block. Uh, the keys that users want to sign with. <laughs> so your user keys are keys that you want to sign with. For you example, have, your personal okay. company's keys. These keys are stored encrypted with a passphrase. The same way L&D stores keys locally. Every time you start NSEC Bunker, you must enter the passphrase to decrypt it. Without the passphrase, keys cannot be used. And then NSEC Bunker's key. NSEC Bunker generates its own private key, which is used solely to communicate with the NSEC Bunker admin UI. If these keys are compromised, no key materials at risk to interact with NSEC Bunker's admin UI. The administrator's key must be whitelisted within NSEC Bunker. All communication between the administrator and NSEC Bunker is NN encrypted with these two sets of keys. Non-whitelisted keys simply cannot talk to NSEC Bunker's admin UI. Uh, and then Nostra Connect, NSEC Bunker listens on certain relays specified in the config file for keys that are attempting to sign with the private key. Uh, cuts off there um so it seems like insect bunker is like a centralized solution that can't get access to your keys but you can delegate permissions to to allow your key to be signed to access different clients well anyway i appreciate you pablo thank you for working on this yes pablo if we are speaking out of our ass. Please correct us on Twitter. Or we probably are. Just as, assume we are. Assume we are. But Nostra is the future. Blue checks be damned. The future is here. I think uh, I want to propose a nip that uh, if. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't want to. I don't. I'm not going to propose. I, any Even joke censorship is not OK. So I will not say my joke. Well, I'm not censoring your joke. I, no, my joke was going to be that uh, 
that if if your public key is linked to a blue checked Twitter account, then all Nostra relays should not <laughs> relay your messages. Luckily, mine is, and I spun my own up. I'm not connected to Twitter at all. You, I mean, you still you linked it in Nostra directory or whatever. No, I didn't. Didn't you? You never did. I don't think so. You never like tweeted out your NPUB or anything? No. <laughs> I see that smile. <laughs> For the audio listeners, he has. Ban the blue checks. No, don't ban the blue checks. Let them just live in their pod and eat their bugs. Like It doesn't matter. We don't have to fight them out, out outwardly. It's a horrible way to live your life. Us blue checks don't live in pods, okay? I don't. I don't have anger against blue checks. It's mostly pity. Pity? Not even disappointment. Yeah. I feel for you. <laughs> I wear my blue check with honor. You should get a blue check uh, necklace. So people, when you're on the street, people know you're a blue check. No, we, we get blue check pins at Bohemian Grove. We show up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Noted. Ah. Uh, Someone just tagged BTC pins in the comments. Hmm. That's all we got for the list. You want to riff on anything? Yes. Anybody? Uh, this is relatively tight rip as of right now. So if anybody, I mean, we have a lot of people in the comments. Is there anything? Uh, is there anything we didn't cover this week that uh, you you think was a highlight that we should have covered that we that we missed? Kind of like that as a recurring. Segment. Nod to the audience. I think we cover most things. I think we do a good job. Just gonna pat myself on the back. There's gonna be some massive thing that we missed. That's gonna be like, Hoo. I know. Yeah. Let me check. Uh... Um, I mean, huge shout out to the team at Wavelength. They had like a great. They had a great post on um, value for value with with music, and streaming sets to artists. Love that team. It's um, pumped to. To meet Michael and Sam in in Miami. Yeah, the they're great. Ago. They're really fucking awesome. Um Yeah, I mean I mean I, I do have three show. episodes to get edited today. <laughs> you have three episodes do you want to riff on that? Or are you are you asking us? No, he's to... trying to get us to wrap it up. <laughs> Logan, don't make me get the switch out, okay? <laughs> You do not barge in and say wrap it up. <laughs> let's let's riff on the three episodes. Uh, well, one you already edited and then we posted. That was good. Uh, was the one with Matt Dines yesterday from Build. A lot of people don't know about. You know, a lot of people know about like public pensions and Social Security being Ponzi, uh, but they don't really focus on the private retirement accounts that many. Boomers have piled their wealth into and are now sitting with a 80 20. Everything's a Ponzi. Yes. 80 20 bond stock splits and the bonds have obviously been getting massacred. It's a massive problem. Uh, Matt did a great job of breaking down, but he also. Thanks. Um, Matt Dines, not Matt Odell. Uh, okay. Did a great job of <laughs> providing a white pill, which is that like Bitcoin credit products, particularly. Unchained lending desk could be a good bridge product for these retirement accounts that can't get direct access to Bitcoin, but they need credit exposure. Um, and just really <laughs> dove into how Unchained's over collateralized lending. What are you laughing at? No, ran more in the comments. Just cut them off, Logan. Power move by middlemen. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just started just imagining Logan just cutting the stream. It's fucking hilarious. But yeah, anyway, check out Marty's recent rips on TFTC. Search TFTC in your favorite podcast app. Well, check and, out. Uh, well, no, I'll show CD for you. Sit on dispatch. Adam Back, Jack Mellers. Great conversation. Thank you, sir. Search Sit dispatch in your favorite podcast app. Adam Adam Back reading the live stream Click as he's as he's button. on the show. He loves he loves the live audience. He was just he was very engaged with the live audience. Love to see it. And then go check um, out. The uh, the names escaping me. The gun, Phoenix. 
Phoenix Ammunition. Yeah, Phoenix F. Ammunition. Yeah. That was fun. That was a good rip. He's uh It was a big flag episode. You both had flags behind you. Yeah. I we didn't coordinate. We didn't like uh, I was like, You got your flag? I got my flag. Let's, let's. we didn't there was no coordination. <laughs> But yeah, it was an honor and a privilege. I, I think it's so cool. Like that's how we we win on just really good, you know, well-run small businesses moving to BTC Pay Server and accepting Bitcoin. And it's like, yeah, like would it be great if you know every gun store in America accepted Bitcoin? Sure, but like in the meantime, like if a few good ones accept, like that's enough. Right. And it's like, and, and I think you can extrapolate that in, in localities too, right? Like in Nashville, like if you have a grocery store or two that accepts Bitcoin, uh, then you just, I'll drive 20 minutes to go to that grocery store. Right. If you have, you know, a hardware store that accepts Bitcoin, I'll drive 20 minutes to go to that hardware store. And you just need like one solid one in each, <laughs> in each, you know, sub segment in the beginning. And that's how it starts. Right. And then more and more, will get censored and realize that they're better alternatives and move to Bitcoin, right? Yeah. One at a time. One small business at a time. We're going to win. I'm feeling good. We feeling we good. must win. We must win, freaks. There is no other option. There, there is no, no other option. option. Mandibles. I've got the fire. These people... Don't deserve our respect. They don't respect the debt ceiling. They don't respect your freedom. They don't respect you. You shouldn't return the. You should return the favor by showing them the lack of respect that they deserve. These people are predators. They're parasites. They're a scourge on this planet, and Bitcoin defangs them. Love you, Marty. Love you, Logan. Love you, freaks. Stay on Stack Sets.